Hello and welcome to Flying High with Flutter. I'm your host, Alan Weiba, and today I'm with a, of course, another very special guest. It is Alexander Denisov. I hope I said that at least somewhat properly. He is a Flutter developer and GDE in Flutter and Dart located in Russia. And yes. one of our previous episodes, if I remember correctly, is uh, Alejandro's uh, said that he learned how to use Canvas by looking at some of your projects. And so, yeah, I wanted to bring you on to talk a little bit more about Canvas, right? So I know you said, we talked a little bit before the show, you said that maybe you're not a super expert in Canvas and in Custom Painter, but at least you could share with us your knowledge about it because you said you did put on some workshops, right? So maybe we start off with kind of who you are. So who are you? Or how can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm from Russia. Uh, you probably heard about such a country. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of really nice places here uh, where you can travel. I really love traveling. <laughs> and uh, when the borders were closed because of the COVID, I began a, a lot to um, travel to, around the country. And it turns out that we have so many co places. But uh, <laughs> it's enough about country. Uh, let's talk about myself. I am development lead of a large, one large Flutter project. Uh, now there are already mo more than 30 Flutter developers. 30 Flutter developers on one project? How do you guys keep I mean, because there must be a lot of things churning, right? Because every time you write Flutter and then you do a format, everything changes, right? So how do you guys, it must be like billions of lines being changed every day, every time you write code, no? Uh, yes, uh, there are already more than 30 Flutter developers uh, in the team, yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, really, I can say that I'm Flutter developer because uh, my developer picks something uh, in our app every day, not management only. I'm just thinking like every time I work with Flutter uh, and even though I change a couple of things, maybe I add just one more widget in and I do a format, a lot of lines end up changing, right? Because of the yes. formatting. So mm -hmm. there must be billions of lines being changed in your application every day, no? Uh, yes, it's uh, <laughs> really too hard to manage because every day I have maybe more hundreds or more pull requests uh, and uh, we are we are trying to work with different part uh, different part of code uh, not due to um, not uh, give uh, a lot of uh, uh, conflicts, but sometimes uh, you need to resolve your conflicts uh, <laughs> uh, twice uh, or more more in the day because. Uh, Sometimes uh, a lot of conflicts, but uh, it's a price for uh, speed and uh, we, we, we have to finalize our project and, uh, <laughs> to the to the date, and uh, that's why uh, we have to work with a big team because it's a really really big application. What kind of application is it exactly that it has to be so big? I mean, is there just a lot of functions or is it just a very complicated UI? What makes it such a big application? Mm -hmm. This uh, application uh, that will work with uh, uh, streaming, video streaming, and will work on uh, six platforms at once. I mean, it will be iOS, Android, web, uh, Android TV, Apple TV, uh, and... Uh, some kind of embedded Linux. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, iOS and Android supported by Flutter, web uh, uh, already supported as well. Um, Linux mm, supported, par partially supported, but for example, Android TV uh, is not officially, officially supported, but there is, uh, there is uh, almost okay, everything uh, except uh, support of uh, remote control. But for example, Apple TV is not supported at all. Uh, for example, to launch a Flutter application on Apple TV, it was necessary to fork uh, Flutter engine and make some changes there. 
um, but now it's work on Apple TV as well. And so you actually have you actually have Flutter running on Apple TV right now. Yes. Yes. Have you guys mm-hmm. tried to commit that back to to uh, the Flutter team? Because like there's a lot of people who are actually looking for that. Uh, uh to be to be honest, uh, we uh, we are working with uh, already um, prepared open source uh, solution for Apple TV. We're working with it. Uh, yeah, you can find it uh, in GitHub, or I can provide the link after the session. And uh, there are um, details about how to launch, uh, no, how to build your custom uh, engine, and uh, how to launch uh, flat application Apple TV. These details, and there is my name as well. <laughs> uh, uh, I will give you a link later. Yeah, please. I'm sure. I mean, I, I see that issue before because I was also interested because I have one Apple TV over here and I love working with Flutter, obviously. Uh, and mm. so I am interested to build an Apple TV app at some point because, yeah, well, why not? I mean, my Apple TV just sits there. I just watch YouTube on it every day. I don't do anything else. Mm-hmm. So it would be nice to have an application on there because um, I, I, I'm i actually kind of curious about like how hard is it to work with that? Because with Apple TV, you have the remote and you swipe. Yes, it was interesting. It was interesting uh, task, uh, and uh, we implemented it uh, with a separate platform channel. Uh, it means we are working with swipes on uh, platform side and uh, uh, send uh, the stream of these uh, events swipe to the platter side, and uh, there we have a some kind of single tone um, gesture handler that uh, uh, manages these swipes and check uh, how it works. And uh, based on these swipes, uh, generate keyboard events that, uh, I mean, left, right, up, down, uh, that uh, control focus of application. Uh, I, I have, in, in my in my repo, I, I uh, have uh, example project uh, for TV. It's possible to check later. I will give the link as well because it's my <laughs> GitHub. Uh, I think you could provide the link onto my GitHub after the session. Yeah, I, w- I would love to. What's actually mm-hmm. your your GitHub link? Uh, I can I can write probably. Yeah, if you can type it to the chat, then I can I can I'll definitely paste it right in there. I now you got me excited. I think I want to start playing with it this weekend. <laughs> Mm, okay, let's back to the story uh, about project. I, I think mm, not sure that anybody else uh, is developing something similar uh, in terms of the size of the team, or complexity of the project, uh, or the number of supported platforms. I think it's really, really nice task, <laughs> and it would be great to finish it. So you have Apple TV, Android, Android TV, which yes. I'm guessing you're probably building upon, are you actually building upon similar ideas of Apple TV? Because I think some Android TVs also have some type of remote, right? Where you press, but it's actually usually it's pressing arrow mm-hmm. buttons. So it should be similar yes. API, right? Uh, Android TV uh, Android TV is uh, working with a uh, keyboard listener and uh, working with uh, remote control um, uh, like with the usual keyboard. And it's uh, quite easy to support it. You just uh, listen the keyboard and uh, move the focus uh, with uh, with swipes. So it's a, a bit more difficult. I uh, prepared a talk to the conference, uh, Flutter for TV, how it works, uh, and uh, mm, gave this talk uh, in a conference in Russia, in Moscow, Mobius. I probably heard about this conference, probably not. Uh, but maybe, mm, ah, and it was in Russian, of course. But uh, <laughs> probably I will repeat this talk somewhere else in English. Uh, I feel couple of papers to some part of conference, probably. <laughs> uh, somewhere I will repeat this talk. No, I'll recommend to hear because it's really interesting how to uh, how is work with tv 
uh, because it's not very often. It's, it's, this is not very often case, but sometimes uh, you can um, add a lot of platforms to supported platform for your application. For example, uh, if uh, before uh, you you could share your code base between two platforms between uh, iOS and Android. Currently, um, you can share uh, code between three three platforms. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, iOS, Android, and web. And probably very soon, uh, it will be six platform uh, with desktop. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, let's uh, imagine how attractive it looks from a management point of view. But if you are working with TV as well, you can use one code base for six, seven, eight platforms uh, where uh, if you worked before with native applications and uh, had to work with six different uh, development teams, now <laughs> you can use only one team. It's really great with Flutter. Yeah, how did you learn how to support the Flutter engine, right? Because Flutter oh. was never supported on, it's never supported on uh, as a target, right? It's never supported on Apple TV. But you guys got it to work, right? It's, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, on the Flutter.dev uh, website, there is uh, some kind of manual uh, how you can um, build your own custom engine uh, if you want to make some changes or if you want to contribute to Flutter engine, uh, you should check it on your own uh, laptop. Uh, that's why there is a... Um, a manual how to do it you just you need to get source code to build them and you can uh, set uh, during flutter build command to uh, set your own engine uh, instead of uh, original and you can do some changes there and to run it on apple tv uh, it was necessary to make some changes uh, because uh, Apple TV is uh, another uh, operation system. Uh, iPhone has iOS, Apple TV, tvOS. And Flutter uh, doesn't work with tvOS. And it was not just to uh, tell to Flutter, you can work with tvOS. <laughs> and uh, just change some uh, using of API. Uh, because uh, in general, TVOS is uh, very similar with iOS. And that's, uh, <laughs> it was uh, a bit uh, complicated, but not very, very complicated. It's, um, it's just, just necessary to remember C++ and Swift. So how many engineers worked on porting the engine from where it was originally to adding tvOS? I uh, can't say exactly because uh, that's uh, engine. <laughs> uh, this is a, a long story because that uh, engine that we are using right now um, uh, wasn't uh, ported by ourselves from beginning. Maybe just uh, help myself. But when I uh, did experiments with it, I did uh, my own version of Flutter Engine, and I did it uh, by myself. I was alone, <laughs> and I launched it. But uh, there were not. Uh, not perfect way and the uh, way that we are choosing right now it's better uh, I suppose but uh, it was I spent to this probably one week with half investigation and uh, working okay that sounds pretty exciting did you actually document your journey or was this was just all in-house just for this client or it's your employer right so this is all in-house for your employer 
And uh, I'm just kind of curious if you guys like wrote this stuff down and, and kind of talked about the journey, because I'm sure that's a very interesting process of, you know, how do I do this and how do I do that and, and these kind of things. Did you document any of this? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not necessary because uh, uh, that's so open source. Mm. Uh, op op open sourced uh, fork of Flutter engine that uh, I will provide you a bit later uh, that uh, everybody can use uh, already documented and uh, or do you mean uh, how I did investigation how I uh, <laughs> how I were thinking and so on exactly that's the latter part you know how did you investigate how did you think about this how did you find out what the things you needed to do hmm. to me that's the most interesting part right because i know it's possible to port things to different places because obviously toyota's doing this for their infotainment system and i know that there's some people doing this uh in other embedded linux systems uh so i am curious about like how can i do something like this like if i have some embedded linux system with a ui you know, how can I port the engine or do I even need to port it, right? Because I guess if the CPU architecture is like a desktop base, then maybe I could just run Linux directly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really, it's a good idea. Uh, idea. I, I suppose mm, it's necessary to write an article about it and publish it. Uh, probably it will be interesting. If you ever publish it, make sure you, you let me know. I would love to read it because that's definitely up my alley. I had no idea that you did something like this. Uh, I wish you would have told me sooner. I would have had more questions about this. But uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, actually, I, I kind of want to know more about you, right? So like, what is your background? Like, how did you get started into programming to begin with? Uh, to, to, to be honest, I, I knew that I would be a software engineer since my childhood. That's true. <laughs> As I remember, uh, I saw I saw my first IBM PC at my father's work uh, and uh, fell in love with oh, wow this computer. <laughs> I was in primary school then. Uh, in that time, it was uh, almost uh, almost impossible to have uh, a computer at home. It was Soviet Union time, <laughs> uh, and uh, when I saw it, I immediately realized that this was my future and uh, since that moment I moved towards to this goal and studied to be a mathematician and software engineer exactly yeah so what, uh, what was like I think a lot of people so the nice part about Flutter is that it's I think it's definitely one of the more easier languages to learn right mm -hmm. and the fact that it's very visual is more easy for people to pick up because it's like okay I can see what I'm doing right if you're programming in C you can't yes. really see the things that you're doing, you can't see a loop unless you do print, unless you print it out. If, <laughs> if you do C out, then you could see it. But for Flutter, nearly everything you do, you could see. So there's a lot more people coming to Flutter who have basically zero programming background. And so uh, people are interested, like, how can I get to be like Alexander, right? I want to be able to port the Flutter thing, right? Well, what, where did he get started? How did how does he know what he knows, right? So yeah, what, what was your first language, right? So you looked at a computer from your dad's uh, yes. work it's it, 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 it's it's easier to ask which language i haven't worked with <laughs> a, a, a long time ago i started working with uh, fartran basic and pascal uh if i i think uh audience uh, know what i'm talking about it's old languages that uh, currently use it not very often then I developed uh, in C++. Uh, I worked in in, in science uh, and uh, built in C++. Then I worked with .NET stack, uh, to be more exact, with C Sharp, uh, and uh, worked with mostly with business logic. Uh, then I switched to Java stack and uh, wrote microservices in Java. Uh, and at that time I was involved in native Android development, uh, and switched to mobile from backend. Uh, and finally on uh, Google IO um, 2019, I met Flutter and Dart and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I realized that this is mine. <laughs>
That was your new girlfriend, basically, right? Yes, <laughs> looks like. <laughs> and uh, since that time, I'm Flutter and Dart developer. So, so okay, so like, I mean, you went through so many different languages, right? So, if you were to pick the technology that you really want to keep working with uh, as much as possible, would that actually be Flutter, or would it actually be something else? Uh, currently, I think uh, Flutter is uh, my my favorite technology, and uh, I I I think. Uh, Flutter has a nice future, mm, and uh, Flutter gives a lot of opportunity, and Flutter uh, gives a lot of opportunity um, to people who want to uh, to become an IT because it's uh, really uh, really simple technology to start to do something. Probably from the beginning, you could uh, do something uh, deep, uh, for example, working with uh, <laughs> uh, your own uh, widget based on render objects uh, or uh, make something on engine uh, layer or so on. But you have uh, a lot of great tools. You have a lot of uh, already prepared widgets and uh, even you don't have uh, IT background, you can do something soon. I, I am kind of curious um, because you did say you came from, you already had Android development experience, right? Yes. But then when you say you saw Flutter, you really like kind of, like we said, fell in love. You had a new girlfriend. Like, uh, what was it that attracted you to it? Because of course, I, I already know uh, an Android developer and I did try to talk to him about Flutter and he is not interested. He thinks that it's just another thing, right? So as an Android developer, a native Android developer, what was it that made you say, you know what, this is something I think I'd rather work with rather than what I'm doing right now? When I, when I was Android developer, I had a problem. Uh, for example, I want to uh, make mobile application uh, and mm, I can do it in Android, but uh, I want to have this application on the both platforms because uh, some people are using iPhone and uh, to solve this problem it was necessary to uh, look for iOS developer or start to learn iOS development and uh, Objective-C or Swift and so on uh, and uh, Flutter uh, can solve this problem uh, much more uh, simple <laughs> uh, than than before, and uh, I I I don't want to go back to Android development, but my Android knowledge uh, helps me sometimes uh, when uh, it's necessary to do uh, some. Uh, custom platform behavior on Android side. And currently I already have uh, experience in Swift and iOS as well. Um, uh, and I, I can't do something on iOS side as well, uh, too. Um, but before, Flutter was a, was a key uh, to do myself uh, uh, development for all platforms. Because for, for example, currently I could uh, make uh, native iOS application as well, but uh, before Flutter uh, I couldn't. Because uh, sometimes uh, when you need to work with platform uh, Flutter, you, you need to learn. <laughs> Somewhere uh, when application a bit more difficult than the easiest. Okay, so the thing that really reeled you in was definitely the cross-platform ability, right? That's the big feature. Yes, and uh, not cross-platform only, multi-platform. Uh, currently, I can I can do websites. I <laughs> I haven't did uh, it. Uh, I I haven't done. Before even 
uh, I I didn't try to work with uh, JavaScript uh, and I I could prepare a website with some kind of uh, template or something like this. And now I can do a website from scratch. Probably, uh, not probably. Uh, this is not an exact website, just a um, uh, single page uh, website, but sometimes single page is enough to, um, to do some kind of uh, landing or something like this, but you can uh, include their animations or wherever you want uh, uh, that you can't do using template. Yeah, the, the animations in Flutter is really, really nice. And what I like about Flutter too is like when you animate something, there's they already have some simple ways to do some simple animations, right? Even like the hero widget is really cool that you can use that to nice. when you transition pages. Very, very, very simple and very effective. <laughs> yeah, and that's like when you see something like that, you're like, whoa, wow, that's really awesome. And when you implement that yourself, you're like, Wow, I, I can do really cool stuff, man. <laughs> and it's just one it's well, it's one widget you use across with the same tag, right? But what Flutter does for you, all that heavy lifting is like, wow, this is amazing. And then if you're yes. developing apps for your client or, or even your own users, it's like they see that, wow, this is really cool. Yes. And uh, as as I remember, the main topic of our discussion is Canvas. Uh and we haven't <laughs> thought about Canvas yet. Probably it's time to talk about Canvas. Yeah, sorry. You, you seems like you 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 have a, a lot of knowledge that I just want to pick out. So you're right. Thanks for keeping us on topic. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Canvas, right? So obviously, I think when you first off with Flutter, you're just going to be building with widgets, simple widgets, and getting more and more complicated. And then I guess you must have somehow stumbled upon Canvas, right? So what got you interested in working with Canvas to begin with? The, f the first time uh, I encountered Flutter Canvas uh, was about probably three years ago uh, when I was working on the one application named InfoGen. It's just uh, something like the text analytics and uh, sentiment analysis solution uh, for that, uh, that automatically finds uh, actionable insight uh, hidden in mountains of data. Uh, just application can be helpful uh, uh, for people uh, who want to be more um, informed uh, to do something like strategic decision on investment and so on. Um, just <laughs> what is this? But uh, we are talking not about this application. Uh, there were the the task. It was necessary to implement an onboarding process. So that uh, the first launch on each screen that uh, was uh, opened for the first time uh, hints uh, of what it uh, was would appear above the buttons and icons in turn. Uh, and standard tooltip widget didn't fit uh, because uh, because of the design. Uh, it was without an arrow and uh, it was necessary to implement this tooltip with, uh, with an arrow. Uh, well, uh, uh, <laughs> that's why I had to make my own widget that draws a tooltip with an arrow using a custom paint widget, uh, which which actually works with the canvas. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, now there are many ready-made solutions uh, from the community um, to solve uh, that problem. Uh, I mean, tooltip with uh, arrow and so on. Uh, I would personally recommend the popover package. Uh, it was made by our guys from the mobile people community. To be exact, by Sasha Prokhorenko. Hello, Sasha, if you hear me. Uh, uh, and how, how how does it work? What is the canvas exactly? <laughs> uh, really. 
this is just uh, a dart wrapper uh, for the uh, SK canvas from Skia. Uh, Skia, you know, it's this two-dimensional graphic uh, engine uh, with which Flutter works to render everything. And uh, Skia has uh, has canvas. Uh, canvas is just just a, an interface for for recording graphical operations one by one uh, and uh, creating picture object based on uh, on uh, on these operations. Uh, in other words, uh, for for custom drawing, <laughs> uh, the the concept of canvas uh, actually exists in many platforms, not only in Flutter. Uh, for example, in Android, because Android uh, using Ski as well. Uh, uh, everywhere you need the ability to draw custom uh, two-dimensional graphic, uh, you can meet something like Canvas. In Android, even the names of uh, user class are the same, Canvas and Paint, because I think it's a uh, Java wrapper on uh, the same <laughs> Ski uh, Canvas. Uh, iOS, for example, uses a different naming, but uh, the essence uh, is the same. Uh, uh, although Swift UI already has a struct with the name Canvas for this purpose, uh, you can meet a Canvas everywhere. But uh, we are talking about Flutter Canvas. <laughs> the main idea uh, is uh, that we um, we take a certain graphic context, uh, which is named canvas, and we can uh, sequentially draw uh, on it some some kind of graphic primitives. Uh, I mean, points, uh, line segments, uh, paths, uh, uh, text, text as well. It's like a primitive, uh, geometric shapes, uh, circles, uh, squares. Uh, uh, and if necessary, coloring them using paint object. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> uh, mo mo moreover, the picture that uh, we get as a result of uh, sequence of these graphical primitives uh, can be modified using the some transformation methods uh, like translate. Scale, rotate, skew, or transform, uh, and also the uh, canvas uh, has a clip region that can be modified with methods like uh, clip react, uh, clip path, uh, and ah, uh, finally, uh, this. Uh, Primitives, a tra set of transforms and clip uh, can be saved and restored uh, if you need. Uh, there are some methods like uh, save, save layer and restore methods. You can uh, save current state and then restore it. Uh, in, uh, state of canvas, I mean. Uh, but with the, with the help uh, of graphic primitives, in fact, you really you can create uh, incredible things uh, since uh, uh, in fact you 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 really control each primitive and uh, you can redraw and uh, animate it uh, anything you want and uh, in result, you can get something really cool uh, because you just you're just drawing <laughs> and you can. Draw something, then animate the, uh, this thing, uh, transform this thing, rotate, uh, uh, rotate and transform, rotate and scale, and uh, mm, working together with animation controller, mm, you can <laughs> you can get movie, for example, but without uh, arrive. <laughs> okay, that's that's pretty pretty interesting. Ah, uh, I just uh, wanted to say so that you can uh, work with uh, Canvas in two ways. Mm. Uh, first, uh, first way, 
uh, it's uh, I think the uh, the easiest and uh, most common. Uh, Ah, oh, okay, okay, let, let, let's start again. Uh, you can, uh, with Canvas, you can create your own custom widgets. Uh, and uh, you can create custom widgets uh, two ways. And uh, I told before about the uh, easiest way, the first one. Uh, and I used, for example, this uh, way uh, when I did it the first time. Uh, I mean custom paint widget. Flutter uh, has from out of the box uh, widget uh, with name custom paint uh, that uh, give uh, that gives an opportunity to work with canvas uh, you can just create your own custom painters uh, that will work with canvas and uh, just attach them to custom paint uh, and uh, after after that, uh, custom paint uh, will draw the pictures you need. Uh, I, I will I, I will attach a link uh, to simple example in my repo. Uh, it's an example uh, that I prepared for simple workshop to work with custom painter. Uh, and you, you can take a look how it works. Uh, and uh, for example, some widgets from uh, out of the box in Flutter are implemented uh, this way. Uh, for example, you know, uh, progress indicator uh, uh, has uh, a custom paint under the hood uh, and work with it. And uh, there is a second way. Uh, it's a more complex case. You can create your own custom widget based on render object. Uh, render object, you know. <laughs> so we have widgets, elements, and render objects. And render objects is a, is a entity that working with, uh, with rendering. <laughs> uh, and uh, you have opportunity to create your own widget based on this uh, render object. Uh, and there, we also can access the canvas by overriding the paint method. Uh, and paint method uh, has a parameter uh, painting context. And canvas is a part of this context. Mm, and uh, creating a custom uh, widget in this way uh, will give you more more flexibility in painting and sizing your widget, but uh, also more complexity. Uh, and uh, also there are widgets from out of the box that created this way uh, and uh, you can take a look how it works. For example, check the switch widget. Uh, and and uh, the, the advice if you want to create your own a widget based on render object. Take a look how it was done by Flutter team, <laughs> because uh, everything that was done by Flutter team usually perfect. Mm. And this way, uh, this painting context is the same for all of your for all, all childs of your widget, for example. Uh, you, you have to remember about it when you create your own uh, widget based on render object uh, and uh, mm, another one will be child of them. Uh, you just need to remember that uh, canvas will be the same for both of them. Uh, and there you you can use, for example, save, save and restore methods to help you uh, with Keeping canvas uh, as you need. Uh, uh, about tips uh, how to learn canvas if you are a beginner. Uh, there are a lot of examples uh, of using canvas in the internet. Uh, I'll provide probably um, some links to useful articles and uh, repositories to check uh, and 
I would recommend starting with a custom paint widget because it's really, really simple. And then, uh, if uh, everything will be fine with custom paint widget, uh, you can try to create something based of render object. Uh, just, as I mentioned before, just read the Flutter source code for any widget that is similar to, to what you want to make. Uh, and to copy it and change something. Uh, and you will get your own widget with your own canvas and so on. I think, I, I don't know how I can say more about uh, canvas because it's, it's really powerful, a really powerful thing, but uh, it's a very simple thing. It's just um, thing you can use to, to draw your own Mm, your your own uh, things <laughs> what you want to, to to draw yeah definitely i think it sounds like if you want to learn how to do it just look at examples right i i took some of the as you're naming some widgets i started copying and pasting those widget documentation into the show notes so we can give those to people and uh i definitely put your github in there because you have i'm sure a lot of stuff that's useful um after this, if you want to write into the uh, question sheet that I share with you, some specific repositories that we should probably make sure. I mean, the Flutter engine, and of course, also your your project about the um, uh, working with Custom Painter, I think is good. Uh, I remember you said that you also taught people how to use Custom Painter, right? You said you put on workshops about that. Has it actually been a pretty smooth process to actually teach people how to use it? Uh, and this uh, workshop was recorded in Russian, unfortunately. <laughs> I have no uh, English version, but I have source code, uh, and uh, I think uh, there are quite um, quite simple. Power the ring. It's just uh, application uh, with one button uh, and uh, one smile. Uh, you push the button and. Uh, uh, you have uh, angry, uh, angry smile with the red color. Uh, push again, and you have green, green face with the smile and so on. And uh, a face with smile just painted by custom painter. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that, and I'll definitely share that with people. Uh, and uh, a bit later, uh, I, I will provide you more, comp more complicated. Uh, uh, repositories and articles and you could attach them to the recording. I will. I definitely will. Thanks so much for that. Um, I want to ask you just a couple more questions as we're approaching the end of our, of our time together. Um, yes, yes. Uh, sure. as somebody, as somebody who's a native, like you work in different platforms, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you think Flutter is a good choice versus something else? Right, because there's, there's definitely other solutions already out there, right? You said you can also do native application. So when would I, when would Flutter not be a good choice, and when would it be a good choice to use as a solution? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> first of all, yes, don't, don't uh, assume that Flutter is a silver bullet, uh, perfect for any challenge. Uh, uh, it's not true. Flutter is really, really handy. Uh, but sometimes uh, you can do without native development. Mm. For example, if you, uh, when it comes to some kind of complex calculations on GPU level, uh, for example, if you if you need to show uh, to show uh, how to say? Uh, some kind of graphic uh, with a lot of calculation when you have uh, x is uh, x, x is y, and uh, mm, well, one hundred thousand of points there, and uh, changing of this. Uh, graphic uh, will be not good in Flutter because it was 
that's a lot of calculations uh, and these calculations will be done uh, on UI layer in Flutter. Mm, you probably could move this calculation for example to isolate but in this time uh, you won't get real time because it will be delay between getting result and that's just one example when flutter is not good uh, for this things it's necessary to use native uh, I think um, or uh, native uh, platform use uh, for example you, you can uh, you can uh, do this natively and use platform view in flutter because uh, the one of the maybe most great things of Flutter it's inter interoper interoperability between platforms and uh, you can do something on native uh, do something Flutter and mix it sometimes it's not very easy but if you can't do something with Flutter you can do it on native and use it in Flutter it's uh, perfect and for example, if you need very different UI for different platform, mm, uh, in this case, uh, you uh, won't uh, save a lot of time because you mm, you will need to to do different UI for different platforms uh, like uh, natively. And, uh, if you have not a lot of business logic there, probably you don't need Flutter in this case. Uh, but for m most uh, part of cases that currently uh, there are in mobile development, Flutter is perfect. I think what I heard before is that embedding native mm -hmm. into a Flutter app is actually not so performant though. As opposed to embedding uh, Flutter within native, there are some uh, could be some uh, delays because uh, native part and Flutter part uh, are connected asynchron uh, async asynchronously, but um, sometimes you can't implement something in Flutter. For example. Hmm. No video, for example. Yes. Uh, all video players that we're using in Flutter is implemented that way. Uh, we have native player that covered by uh, Flutter uh, UI components, and uh, we just see mm, video stream in the native part. Okay, that makes sense. Or something like that. You, you, you know that uh, uh, Google Maps uh, plugin uh, is done uh, by using Platform View. It's a native part uh, embedded in Flutter. I didn't know that, but that definitely makes sense because I know it's pretty fluid, right? I, I can't imagine that being done within Flutter, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you can uh, go another way. <laughs> I am kind of curious, though. What State management do you tend to use? Um, uh, the most often question, <laughs> I think. Uh, everybody uh, wants to talk about state management. Um, I, I like I like the block concept. Mm, yes, I, I started to use it using it uh, even before uh, before the appearance of the Felix uh, Angular package. And I still prefer to implement my own block based on streams because I can control uh, everything that I want. But uh, uh, although uh, the Flutter block library by Felix is very good. Mm. But uh, nevertheless, uh, different tasks uh, require different solutions. Sometimes I use the Redux package by Brian Egan uh, when I see that Redux is more suitable and uh, it's necessary more more strong uh, flow. 
Mm, and uh, if I can get by with a simple solution, then just use simple state management with a provider because it's the easiest way. Uh, mm, Mobix uh, is also good, but I uh, don't uh, very like it because a lot of code generation and uh, any change you need to do some code generation and if you want to debug something you have to deep dive in generated code and I don't like this way but Mobix is very powerful state management as well um, or some solution I think it's more will be suitable but I I, I, I fan of block <laughs> Have you ever played with Riverpod yet? Because that seems to be one of the most popular ones that, as of recently, Riverpod. Ah, R Riverpod. <laughs> I pronounced it <laughs> another way. Uh, Riverpod. Yes, I tried Riverpod because uh, I was prepared to talk about state management for one of conference. And uh, I did research about uh, all mm, of state management that already presents on the market and uh, yes i checked your report report is nice nice solution uh, that looks like a provider but uh, without using of context uh, and uh, you don't uh, um, you don't need a widget tree to use it uh, but i uh, i didn't use it in production just researched it and you did you use it i actually use it in one project right now because i heard good things about it and i quite liked it um but i mean the nice part is i find it very easy to uh change the scope right so you can use provider scope when you're writing tests so that mm -hmm. was important to me is i wanted to be able to actually tdd a ui and i found it pretty easy to do with a river pod um what I do right now when I create my apps and I'm pretty happy with is I use Git it. Uh, so it's like the dependency injection, Git it, with block. And so with that, that's how I tend to check my code and I use block test, but I don't do any UI testing right now. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I think I saw that with Git it, you can actually do something similar to the provider scope where you can like rewrite how it looks up objects. But I haven't had a moment to play with it yet. But I, I think that's the next thing is when I get some time, I'll probably try to write, start writing UI tests with block. Um, maybe just replace the block and then just send my own stream down, right? Just so I can have a try. And making sure that if I click this button, then an event comes in that I'm looking for with a certain data, things like that. Um, as somebody else who uses block and likes block, uh, we all know that Dart when you have the double equals method, right, it's going to look for by reference, right, not by value. So do you use equatable for your for your checking or do you use uh, something else? Because recently I've switched to use, um, what is that called? I forgot the name of that one. It's done by Remy, the same guy who created Riverpod. He has a library for doing equality. In generation oh freezed for freezed you mean yes, yeah I use yeah freezed. yeah you use freezed mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right yeah before i use equatable and then now i switched okay. over to freezed yeah for, uh equitable by felix angelov as i remember as well <laughs> uh but yes freezed uh, in my opinion a bit more suitable uh, because uh, the comparing is more complex, I think, and you don't need to um, add uh, uh, something. As I remember, when I use equitable, you need to extend your H class uh, on equitable and add um, method or something like this to. I think there's a there's a property we have to add in what fields to use to check with, right? So that's why I'm pretty happy using freeze because now it generates all that for me, which is kind of funny because once you're just complaining about like mob actually have to use a lot of generators, freeze, you have to use generators, right? 
Yes, but uh, freeze is just generators uh, regarding um, your entities. You can work with your entities uh, and you can sure that uh, if uh, they're uh, equals, it equals and you can use mapping, uh, but there is no logic. Uh, Mobix is about uh, some logic and uh, uh, that's why I don't like to debug uh, this uh, generated code. Uh, uh, when I debug code with Freeze, I don't need to debug code generated by Freeze because there are no nothing special, nothing uh, uh, to check there. <laughs> I think one of my favorite thing about Freeze is that it's really frozen, right? So I have to use copy with because um, yeah, there's too many times where it, this thing is editing that and that's editing that, and I don't know what's going on. And so having Freeze, it's like okay, as long as I'm pointing to that piece of data and if that thing gets changed at least everybody who's looking at that piece all will get updated right that's what i really love about it well, very useful mm -hmm. okay um i think as somebody who's been working with flutter and different technologies for a while do you have any tips for for new developers about how they can uh progress farther in their understanding and learning of flutter the don't be afraid and just start coding. <laughs> more practice, more experience. And uh, when you um, met some kind of problem, you have a lot of opportunities to solve it. Uh, a lot of uh, documentations, uh, a lot of articles, a lot of uh, podcasts. Uh, Mm, for example, this podcast as well. <laughs> uh, the best source of knowledge, in my opinion, for beginners is a Flutter point dev site by Flutter team. Uh, and uh, a part of, well, apart from uh, me, there are a lot of article tutorials, uh, answers, uh, Stack Overflow, and so on. And uh, don't forget about uh, community. Uh, Flutter has a, a very strong community and uh, mm, apart from Flutter community, a lot of GDG community, you know, Google developer groups community. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple of, of groups uh, on meetup.com, I think. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm organizer of GDG Moscow group uh, and uh, we often organize events uh, and uh, workshops uh, dedicated to Flutter as well. Flutter study jam, for example. Uh, and I suppose uh, you can just uh, look around you and find your nearest chapter of GDG and check. Uh, and you can find um, uh, people there who are interested in Flutter as well and uh, talk with them and, and so on. Uh, and uh, now in COVID time, we have a lot of online activities, online workshops, and so on. Uh, a huge amount of opportunities. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to, to say before we sign off for the day? I think Flutter is the future of mobile development. And learn it. Uh, don't, don't forget about native development, but I think the most part of um, usual application without difficulties will be, uh, well, will be implemented using Flutter. And uh, it's very useful to learn it right now. Because demand, the, the demand of uh, Flutter specialist is growing every day because uh, more and more businesses understand that uh, Flutter gives opportunity to save resources and start uh, looking for Flutter specialists. And market market doesn't have enough Flutter specialists, uh, and demand is growing. I was going to say it's a very very bold and very big statement you made, right? That the that the future is definitely Flutter. 
it's a pretty big statement. It's, it's, it's just my, my opinion. Uh, probably in the, mm, uh, in the five years, uh, somebody, uh, invent framework, uh, that will be better than Flutter. But mm, in general, I mean, I think cross platform in the future and Flutter now is the best cross platform. Okay. I think, I think that's true. In the immediate future, I think Flutter definitely is the best. Let's not say cross-platform, let's say multi-platform, like you said, right? Best multi-platform solution out there. Um, okay. So if nothing else, then I think we can say goodbye, and I hope to have you back sometime soon. Goodbye, everybody.